Five years ago, Meta thought they had less than a 10% chance of pulling this off. Today, they've got working prototypes that cost $10,000 each and might just change everything. I'm talking, of course, about the mysterious Meta Orion glasses, and I've dug through the available technical reports, demos, leaked patents, and insider accounts to piece together exactly what Meta has built and how it stacks up against current AR glasses, as well as Apple and Google's plans. And honestly, the picture it paints is pretty remarkable. Let's start with the basics. The current working version of Orion isn't coming to stores without some radical changes. Each prototype costs about $10,000 to manufacture, which puts it around the price of a used car. But of course, as a prototype, the point is that they're paving the way for consumer versions that are actually coming in a matter of years. Here's Meta's endgame. They want to build the successor to the smartphone, not just another gadget you carry around, but something that could actually replace the need to constantly look down at a screen. Here's the key thing that makes Orion different from every other AR glasses you can buy today. It's not tethered to your phone. Every other AR glasses on the market, from the X-Real 1 to the Rokid Max to even Google's upcoming Android XR glasses, basically work as external displays for your smartphone or laptop. You're still dependent on another device doing all the thinking. Orion is a standalone computer that happens to look like glasses. It has its own processors, its own AI, its own understanding of the world around you. Imagine never having to pull your phone out of your pocket again because all the information you need appears right in your field of vision exactly when you need it without being tied to any other device. That's the vision and Orion is their proof that the technology to make it happen actually exists. Meta has built a pair of glasses that weighs 98 grams, just under the magic 100 gram threshold that researchers say makes the difference between glasses and thing strapped to your face. For comparison, your average reading glasses weigh about 30 grams, so we're talking roughly three times heavier, but still in the realm of what you might actually wear for extended periods. The real breakthrough is the 70 degree field of view. That's about 40% greater than the current largest offerings, and it makes a massive difference. Most air glasses today struggle to hit 50 degrees, which is more like looking through a small window, and the ones that do typically look more like ski goggles than glasses. Meta achieved this wide view using silicon carbide lenses, a material so hard it's normally used to coat drill bits. Without getting too into the weeds, the large refractive index of the silicon carbide is what allows the super wide field of view. But the strange part is that Meta has been unusually open about their development process. Unlike typical tech company secrecy, they've published detailed blog posts about their custom silicon chips, their silicon carbide manufacturing challenges, and even let journalists test the glasses for extended periods. This isn't normal behavior for a prototype that costs this much to make. The information we have comes from three main sources. First, Meta's own technical documentation and blog posts, where their engineers have been surprisingly candid about both successes and challenges. Second, hands-on demos from tech journalists who've spent anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour actually using the glasses. And third, patent filings and industry reports that fill in the technical gaps. But what's it actually like to use them? Based on the demos, you're looking at three main types of experiences. First, there's the productivity stuff, floating browser windows, video calls where the other person appears as a hologram in front of you, the ability to have multiple virtual screens arranged around your physical space. One tester described watching baseball highlights in a floating window while simultaneously checking messages and browsing the web. Then there's the AI integration, which is where things get really interesting. The glasses can look at ingredients on your counter and suggest recipes displaying the instructions as floating text. They can identify objects in your environment and provide contextual information. During one demo, someone asked the AI about a book they were looking at and it provided a summary and reviews without them having to type or even say the book's title out loud. And finally, there's the social and gaming aspects. People have played virtual ping pong across a room with each player seeing the ball and paddles in the same shared space. They've had holographic video calls where it genuinely looked like the other person was sitting across from them. The control system is fascinating. You wear a wristband that reads electrical signals from your muscles. Pinch your thumb and index finger to select something, use your middle finger and thumb to bring up menus, make a fist, and flick your thumb to scroll. It sounds complicated, but everyone who's tried it says you pick it up within minutes. To understand why this matters, you need to know what else is out there. Today's AR glasses fall into two categories. Simple smart glasses like the Ray-Ban Metas, which are basically cameras and speakers with no display, and more advanced AR glasses that typically have tiny displays with limited field of view and processing that's offloaded to a third-party device like your phone. 
On the other end, you've got glasses like the Xreal Ones and Rokid Airs, which do have visual displays, but they admittedly feel a bit like the early generation of AR glasses. The field of view is narrow, the image quality can be underwhelming in bright environments, and they rely on external devices for power and processing. Apple's Vision Pro is obviously much more capable, but it's also a 600 gram headset that costs $3,500 and makes you look like you're wearing a scuba mask. It's impressive technology, but it's solving a different problem. Orion sits in this weird middle ground where it actually delivers on the promise of AR glasses. Genuine, seamless integration of digital content with the real world in a form factor you'd actually wear in public. And speaking of competition, things are moving fast. Google just announced Android XR, their operating system for extended reality devices, and they've been showing off prototype glasses that look remarkably slim. These glasses work by streaming content from your Android phone, which keeps them lightweight, but limits what they can do independently. Again, like the current models, instead of trying to cram all the processing power into the glasses themselves, they're leveraging the computer you already carry. At a recent TED Talk, they demonstrated live translation, object recognition, and even a memory feature where the AI can help you find your keys by remembering where you last placed them. Apple, meanwhile, is reportedly going all in on AR glasses, with Tim Cook allegedly making them his top priority. I mean, it's clear the tech giants all believe this is the next great frontier of consumer devices. But Apple's timeline is different. They're rumored to be working on simple smart glasses similar to Ray-Ban Meta's launching in 2026, with true AR glasses still years away. Apple's challenge is that they want to do everything in-house, which means developing their own displays, chips, and manufacturing processes from scratch. The interesting thing is that everyone is taking a different approach. Meta is pushing the boundaries of what's possible with expensive custom components. Google is leveraging existing phone hardware to keep things simple and affordable. Apple is reportedly waiting until they can do it right, according to their standards, even if that takes longer. But let's talk about why this is so hard. The 70 degree field of view comes with trade-offs. The actual resolution is only 13 pixels per degree, which is roughly equivalent to watching a 720 by 540 pixel display. Meta has prototypes running at 26 pixels per degree, but that comes with reduced brightness. The silicon carbide lenses are both the breakthrough and the bottleneck. They enable the wide field of view, but they're incredibly expensive and difficult to manufacture. Industry experts question whether silicon carbide can ever be produced at consumer-friendly prices, which is why Meta's consumer version will likely use regular glass and accept a reduced field of view. Battery life is another challenge. The glasses themselves last two to three hours, which sounds reasonable until you realize that's with most of the processing happening in a separate wireless puck. The puck and wristband can last all day, but you're still looking at a device that needs charging more often than your phone. And then there are the image quality issues that most reviews gloss over. Technical analysis shows significant color uniformity problems and what experts call eye glow. The glasses literally glowing like tiny flashlights on your face, which is probably not the look most people are going for. So where does this leave us? By disregarding product cost, Meta has essentially built a time machine that shows us what consumer AR glasses might look like in a few years. The current Orion prototypes won't become products, but they prove the technology is possible. Meta's roadmap includes Hypernova glasses launching in the next year or two. Think of them as Ray-Ban Metas with a small display in the corner of one lens. Then Artemis glasses around 2027, which will be the true consumer version of Orion, albeit with glass lenses and a reduced field of view. The race is definitely heating up. Google and Samsung could have Android XR glasses as early as 2026. Apple is working on both simple smart glasses and full AR glasses, though their timeline is less clear. Meta is pushing ahead with increasingly sophisticated prototypes while also releasing interim products to build market awareness. The winner will likely be whoever solves three problems first, making the technology affordable, proving compelling use cases that justify replacing or supplementing your smartphone, and achieving social acceptance for wearing computers on your face. But here's the thing, we might be getting ahead of ourselves. Yes, the technology is impressive. What I find most encouraging about Orion is that it's the first time AR glasses have looked genuinely useful rather than just technically impressive. The ability to have information appear exactly when and where you need it without having to look down at a screen is compelling in a way that previous AR demos haven't been. Whether it's Meta, Google, Apple, or someone else entirely who gets there first, 
we're probably just a few years away from AR glasses that normal people might actually want to wear. And based on what we've seen with Orion, that future looks pretty interesting. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe for more deep dives into the tech that's shaping our future. And let me know in the comments, are you excited about AR glasses or are we just solving problems that don't really exist?